Hello everyone and all welcome back to Love is Strange and the beginning of the Kate Marsh route. So we've done all the other routes now, Chloe, Victoria and Rachel and we're now starting the Kate route. So uh, I head outside the dorms and see Kate sitting on a bench out on the front lawn at sketchbook in hand. So we're going to go talk to her. Hey Kate. And if you've seen the other episodes, you know I don't do voices. Kate looks up from her sketchbook and gives me a warm smile. Good morning, Max. It's good to see you. I'm happy to see her too. Come to think of it, Kate's been a little hard to get hold of lately. She seemed a lot quieter than usual. She's not the loudest person to begin with, but maybe she has something on her mind. Whatever it is, it doesn't stop her from greeting me as warmly as ever. That's Kate Marsh for you. I missed your violin playing this morning. Not that I would have heard much of it over Damon's music. I sit down next to Kate on the bench and see that, see that she's sketching a few cartoon characters gathered around a fountain. Kate notices me looking and smiles softly, pencil tapping idly against the paper. I thought I'd try to get some drawing in before class starts. When I'm feeling inspired, I always want to sketch right away so I don't forget the images in my head. I look more closely at the page. Kate's drawings are always so cute and lively. She'd make an awesome character designer, or storyboarder, or an illustrator for children's books. Any one of those would suit her. So I wonder if our photography project will somehow involve, like, cartoons? I know what you mean. I'll drop everything I'm doing if the time is right for a photo. Speaking of cartoons, before recording this episode about an hour ago, I actually watched a few more episodes of Batman the Animated Series, and I watched the first episode of um, Batman The New Adventures. It's actually Bat the, the new Batman Adventures, but whatever. I can't believe you can do this kind of stuff with just coloured pencils. It's so cute. Thanks, Max. I've always loved your photos, too. Kate's compliments always warm my heart. The best part is that I know that she means it. She's so sincere and positive. Speaking of photos, what do you think of dogs? What do you think dogs going to surprise us with today? Again, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that. I guess it's like mix. Kate's expression turns thoughtful and she clasps her hands on top of her sketchbook. I'm not sure. They seemed really excited about it when I was helping them catalogue our photography textbooks on Friday. I'd forgotten that Kate is Dog's assistant. Better than being Jefferson's assistant. Did they mention anything about the surprise, other than being excited? Kate laughs and shrugs, and she seems to glow. The cross hanging from her neck catches the sunlight and flashes bright and golden. You're always so curious about the world, Max. A lot of people would just say I'm nosy. Kate gives a little huff and continues drawing in her sketchbook, her pencil delicately tracing curves and lines. I think you just have a knack for adventure. Like Gloria here, she's an amateur detective. Kate points to one of the characters in her drawing, a small figure peering into the fountain with huge inquisitive eyes. A little cattail pokes out from under the character's long coat. Thanks Kate, I'm glad you believe in me. I should get going though. Kate nods. I wouldn't want you to miss Dog's surprise. I'll catch up soon. See you, Max. Um, let's go back to the hallway. I don't think if we talk to anyone else that it will mess up our chances of being with them. Yes. So, like, if I talk to Kate and then I talk to Victoria, I don't think that ruins my chances with Kate, but I still don't want to risk it anyway. Okay, um, let's try and skip past here a bit. We've seen this before. So, announcing the contest, and we have to pick our partner, and we're gonna pick Kate. Yes. I pick my camera. Oh, we got an achievement. We'll have to have a look at that at the end. Hopefully I'll remember. I pick my camera up off of my desk and make my way over to Kate, who's still looking at me. Oh, she's so cute. I'm so excited for you, Max. This contest was made for you. I wish I could feel the same way. I'm already nervous. You'll do fine. We smile at one another for a moment and I fidget. I wonder if it would be okay to ask Kate. 
If my intuition is right, something else has been in her mind lately. I should let her know that it's okay if she doesn't want to enter the contest, or be my partner for that matter. So I was wondering if maybe you'd like to be my partner for the contest. You definitely don't have to, but I thought it might be fun to finally get to work together. You've got a great artistic eye and... Kate's not saying much. She's got her hands folded together and she's looking down at them. I decide to shut my big fat mouth. Finally, she speaks quietly. I like that very much. Oh, Kate, I'm really happy to hear that, but you don't have to. I know you have um, lots of work to do usually, with your art classes and being dog's assistant and your club. Kate suddenly laughs, high and sweet. Max, I always have time for you. As long as you're totally serial, I know you have a lot on your plate. More like in your bowl. But um, ch Completely. I'm flattered you asked. We're interrupted by Dog trailing back to the front of the classroom and clearing their throat. Alright, alright. It's a hell of a feeling though. I've got to get into today's lecture. If you haven't picked a partner yet, then be sure that you do before class gets out. I settle back into my seat. Okay. Kate is still seated by the time I cross over to her desk. She's drawing in her sketchbook again, her pencil making a faint path over the page. Hey Kate. Hopefully her drawings are a bit happier than in the very first episode of the game. Because if you look at her drawings in episode one, she's... They're worrying. She's drawn like a noose on a tree and everything. And I think it might say I want to die on the page as well. Hi Max. She greets me without looking up at first, and then she sets her pencil down and starts tucking her sketchbook away. If you're sure you want to work together for the contest, we should let Dog know. I'm sure that I'm sure. I pick Kate's book bag up off of the floor for her as she pushes her, pushes her chair out and stands. She gives me a grateful smile. Thank you, Max. I'll take it. She reaches out for her bag. Her shoulders seem to slump slightly beneath its weight. Or maybe I'm just imagining things. I follow Kate towards the front of the classroom and we give Dog our names for the contest registration sheet. After that's done, Kate turns to me. I want to contribute as much as I can to this, even if I'm not much of a photographer. Don't sell yourself short, your work is really strong. I'm more of an illustrative artist. But to be able to draw professionally, you have to teach yourself about scale and perspective and proportions, right? All of that stuff applies to photography too. I guess I never thought about it that way. Sometimes I sketch in my journal. I've learned lots about how much photography has in common with drawing just by doodling. I'd love to see your sketches sometime. I bet they're wonderful. They're really not that great, I swear. Now it's my turn to reassure you, isn't it? You got me there. Okay, okay, I'll show you. Kate smiles, her eyes sparkling. We can save that for a later date. For now, we've got the contest. Right, do you want to meet tomorrow morning to do some planning? Like, for where we're going to take this photo? I was just about to ask you the same thing. Well, how about the two whales? I'm never not in the mood for a good breakfast. I kind of find it funny when people say things like that, like a double negative. I'm never not in the mood for a good breakfast. You could just as easily say I'm always in the mood for a great breakfast, you know? Same. So it's settled. I've got to catch my next class, but I'll message you later to set up a time. Sounds good. I pause, hesitating as I look at Kate's tired face. Thanks for partnering with me, Kate. Take care, okay? I will, Max. I'll see you tomorrow. I hope um, she doesn't attempt suicide like she does in the main game. Kate's chin dips towards her chest as she leaves the classroom. I'm sorry if that was a spoiler as well, but you've probably already experienced the main game if you're watching this. I hope she's all right. She's as warm as ever, but I can't help but feel that something is off. I hope I'm wrong, but maybe this contest will help her take her mind off of whatever it is. When I played 
that episode for the first time I actually cheated and looked up how to save her because I cared about her so much I didn't want her to die. It's about 10 in the morning by the time I get to the diner the next day. There's still a decent crowd even though it's a little before the lunch rush. Mostly the usual suspects enjoying a late breakfast. Truckers, cops and a few students like me. Joyce keeps a watchful eye over these particular patrons. She smiles at me, however, and I wave at her. There's no shortage of seats, so many S sounds, so I idle by the door for a moment. Yesterday, Kate and I agreed to meet here so that we could discuss locations for the contest photo. I was a little hesitant to ask for her help at first. Kate seems to have a lot on her mind lately. She's been more shy than usual, rarely emerging from her dorm room except to go to class. I'm not sure what's going on, but I don't want to give her more stress than she already has. But seeing her face light up reassured me that I had made the right choice in asking her. Maybe this will help get her mind off whatever's bothering her. Or at least make her laugh when I make an ass of myself entering a shitty photo. Speak of the devil, or angel in this case, Kate enters the diner. She looks a little bewildered, but she smiles when she sees me beckoning her to stand next to me. Hi Kate. Hey Max, sorry if I kept you waiting. I've actually never been here before, so I had to look up the bus schedule before I left. She may have kept me waiting all of three minutes, if that. It's not the first time I've had to wait on someone. Take Chloe, for example. Don't get me wrong, she's my best friend, but... Girl can't keep an appointment to save her life. Same. Kate, on the other hand, is almost painfully considerate, always putting other people first. I guess that's what makes me want to look out for her. The thought of someone as sweet as Kate losing her reason to smile seems wrong. No worries, is Booth okay? I gesture to one in the corner near the old jukebox. Kate nods and we both make our way over to it, sitting on opposite sides. Wow, does it always smell so good in here? She looks like she's literally in heaven from the smell of the delish breakfast food being prepared. I can't help but smile as I reply. Yes, Joyce is an amazing cook. She'll take good care of you. A waitress shows up to take our drink orders. Coffee for me and tea for Kate. She may be an early bird, but I need my caffeine fix. When the waitress comes back, I order my usual stack of pancakes. God, I love pancakes. And Kate orders the same thing, apparently trusting my judgement. I hope the person who invented pancakes, I don't know if they're still alive, but I hope they had or are having a great life, like they deserve it. When Kate takes a sip of her tea, she practically melts into the cushion behind her, like she's truly relaxing for the first time in a while. I notice the shadows under her eyes for the first time since we sat down and feel a pang of uneasiness in my stomach. She looks really tired. I can't help but wonder how she's doing. Should I say something about it? Okay, um, I might save really quick. We're running out of spaces to save. Um, let's just ask, because in the sequence in episode 5, you can talk to her and make sure she's okay, and that actually changes things. You can talk to her and say, like, hey, people really care about you, etc, etc, and it means she doesn't kill herself. Are you feeling okay? No offence, but you look a little worn down. She seems surprised that I asked, but recovers almost immediately. I'm fine. Just a little stressed out with, you know, life in general. I'm still not sure she's telling me everything, but I'd better not push her for now. She probably has her reasons. I hear that, but listen, if you need to talk about anything, I'm here, okay? I get another genuine smile out of her as she sips her tea again, the warmth of it put, putting some colour back in her cheeks. Thanks, Max. I really do appreciate it. Our food arrives and I immediately dig in, not realising how hungry I'd been until Joyce's famous pancakes were right under my nose. Looks like someone's hungry. I look from the half-eaten meal on my plate to Kate's, hardly touched in comparison. I can hear my mum chiding me in the back of my head, but the grin on Kate's face tells me that she hardly minds. It's warm and glowing, and makes me smile right back at her like a huge dork. 
Kate seems to have that effect on me. More than I thought, apparently. Kate just laughs. I don't blame you. These are better than anything I've had in the Blackwell cafeteria. Make sure you pass that on to Joyce. I mean, school food in general is just kind of awful. My school food wasn't too bad because we had it like, some of it was made on the premise, I think, but a lot of it was just kind of brought over in a van, like from a local food company, I think, which sounds a lot fancier than it really is. It really wasn't that fancy, but I liked it. But to be honest, I eat anything. I used to always get a slice of pizza for the first few years and then I switched to getting this like skinny popcorn and I always used to just get that. I will if I see her before we leave, but she probably hears that kind of thing all the time. I shouldn't bother her. I reach across the table and nudge her hand gently with my own. You're never a bother, Kate. You've got to believe that. She looks at her hand then back up to me, grinning again. I'll try it, Max. She smiles so much when we're alone together. Kate doesn't open up to a lot of people, preferring to keep to herself most of the time. I'm one of the lucky ones that get to see the other side of Kate, her chatty, bubbly side. It makes me feel awesome. After I finish inhaling my breakfast and Kate goes about eating hers, I decide to bring up the contest entry. Alright, we don't have a lot of time so we need to think of a game plan. Kate looks up from where she's been twirling her fork in the remnants of her pancakes, giving me her full attention instead. Right, what did you have in mind? Hmm. The location of the photo is going to be really important, so let's focus on that first. Do you have any... Okay, I'm just going to take a really quick drink. It's not easy reading for long periods of time out loud. I stop, suddenly very aware of Kate's eyes on me, not focusing on my words but on me in particular. What? Do I have something on my face? Kate laughs, breaking the tension in an instant. Yes, actually, you've got a bit of... here. She leans over the table between us and gently wipes the corner of my mouth with a napkin. She does it so naturally and gently that I barely have time to register what's happening. Before I can react, she's seated again. There, that's better. Um, thanks. I touched the side of my mouth where Kate's hand had ghosted, feeling a slight heat in my cheeks. It felt really nice to get her attention. Alright, Max, focus. The contest, remember? See, that's why I picked you to be my partner, Kate. I'd be all over the place without you. Yeah, about that. Kate fingers her cross necklace self-consciously, like there's something on her mind. What's up? Kate shrugs, looking away. Are you worried about the contest? It's not that. Her eyes snap back to mine. I'm not worried about you handling the contest, Max. I'm just not sure why you picked me to help you. What do you mean? I haven't been feeling myself lately. What if I slow you down or mess you up? I just don't think I'm as talented as you. If I screwed up your chances of winning, I'd feel awful. Wow, she's really beating herself up over this. Kate, maybe, maybe you should pick someone else to help you instead of me. I won't have any hard feelings, I promise. There's no way I want anyone else to help me besides Kate. What could I say to reassure her? We can do it. I shake my head. Sorry, that's not going to happen. But I picked you to help me because I thought we'd make a great team. I know how to set up a nice shot, sure, but I have trouble bringing it to life. Play the Evanescence song. I've seen your art for those little children's comics you make. They're so vibrant. There's so much emotion in your work. It's, cred it's incredible. <laughs> Kate looks shocked, looking down again. Oh, Max. You're way too nice. I'm serious, Kate. You're an amazing artist. Just the kind of person I want working with me. So don't worry, okay? With you on my team, I know our entry is going to be great. I'm not a motivational speaker, but Kate actually looks hopeful after I say that. Okay, you're right. 
Go Team Max. I put my hand over hers and smile. You mean Team Max and Kate. We finish our drinks and get ready to exit the diner. According to my phone, it's only been an hour since we sat down to breakfast, so there's still plenty of time left in the day. Um, okay. Where to now, Max? Do you have any ideas for a location? Um, you decide. Hmm. Oh, follow me, Max. Okay, I'm going to end this episode here. Let's look at the diary real quick. Um, I asked Kate, out of anyone and everyone in my photography class, Kate has the most calming energy of any of them, and she has an illustrative artist's eye. That's hard to say kind of fast. I know I can probably produce something great with her as my partner. Hopefully Kate's into it too. She seemed happy about it when she agreed to be my partner, but I seriously can't shake the feeling that something is off. Kate and I met up at the two whales, she showed up looking kind of tired, she seemed pretty glad for the chance to sit down like we do on our dates, if anything I really hope the time we'll be spending together this week will give her a chance to relax. Spending one on one time with Kate is really the best, when I'm around her it's hard to feel worried, she's got a cheerful talkative side that I don't get to see a whole lot of when we're at school, maybe school's got something to do with that. Anyway Kate seems a little worried about the contest. She actually asked me why I picked her as my partner. The fact that she even doubted it is crazy. Why wouldn't I want to work with her? Okay, I'm going to end this episode here. Thank you guys for watching this. And I'll see you all in the next... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Almost forgot. We need to look at the achievements because I said I would. Okay, let's see if we can find... Oh, here we go. A gentle approach. I don't really know, I can't remember what that's referencing. It was when we asked her to be our partner, I think, but I don't remember making a decision there or anything. Like, we made the, the decision to ask her, but we didn't make the decision to ask her in a certain way, you know? Like, we didn't ask her gently, so I don't really... I don't know, but I like the achievements. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, I just want to see the achievements we haven't got. Okay. I want to get that one. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Or next episode. Bye, everyone.